December 31, 1980. When you become one with everybody's consciousness, there is an emotional drain because you feel their sorrow and everything. Is that a right state in which to be? It is one of the preliminary stages, but it is excellent. There is still separateness, but gradually it will ripen into complete oneness. I don't feel any desire anymore to strive for anything in the world. There is nothing wrong in that. Your hunger and thirst for bliss or joy is absolutely fulfilled, and therefore you stop going after things. Is there still some individuality left to continue one's duties? That individuality does not create any kind of discontent or fear. It so happens that there is no memory at all of that individual I. It goes on acting on its own energy. There is a memory that this is the total manifestation, but no memory of an individual acting. I feel that I am one with consciousness, but it wavers. You are not yet stabilized in consciousness. You are getting some glimpses. Being one with consciousness is going beyond these states of waking and sleeping. You know the sky, you know the space, but can you become one with the space? Not yet, it is not possible. When you become one with consciousness, you become one with space. Is there something which I can do to help me to grow, to progress? Consciousness does not undergo any progress. Even the space cannot have any progress, and the space is number three. One is absolute. Two is consciousness. Three is space. Where there was no knowledge I am, that is number one. Later on, there is the sense I am, that is number two. Then there is space, number three. Passing the examination of the Upanishads, does it give you knowledge of the self? No. However, it does something. In my case, everything is spontaneous. That is my dharma. If the knowledgeable people come and tell me I am foolish, I will say, this foolishness is my richness, my freedom. That knowingness which has come over me, that itself is foolishness. You are a very gentle woman. If someone comes and abuses you, thinking you are a man, you will get very angry at this misunderstanding. To identify with anything, I am like this, is abuse of your nature. But how to lose this identification with the body? Increase the conviction that you are the formless consciousness. You develop your firm conviction that you are the total manifestation, universal consciousness. There is nobody who can have the knowledge of the truth, the eternal. It is one's eternal true state. But it is not a knowledgeable state. You cannot know it. So-called knowledge is boundless and plenty in the state of attributes. I am. In this body is the knowledge I am. When the body drops down, the knowledge I am will subside there only. What remains is the absolute. January 1st, 1981 does the universe exist without me? When you did not have the consciousness, were you concerned with the world? The world will exist as long as consciousness is there. Don't get involved in too many questions and answers. Do meditation. Let your birth drop. Focus your attention on that and everything will be revealed to you. If you as an entity want to make an intellectual study of the subject, don't come to see me. Here it is you only. Get in the test tube. Why do you get entangled in the branches and leaves? Why don't you go to the seed? Without the seed, the tree would not be there. Find out where the seed comes from. This is what I am taking you back to again and again. Whatever I have to suffer, physical or otherwise, is it due to what? It begins with self-love, the need to be present. This consciousness is the cause of all suffering. This love of being, love of self, love of consciousness, is the nature of what? It is the nature of the seed, the sperm. The consciousness was latent in that to which the name birth is given. Where is the one who understands this? Having got the spiritual knowledge, why do you want to reduce it to pen and paper? 
People will hear what I say, but hardly anyone will put it into practice. I did not have a long association with my guru. My guru merely told me, you are not this, you are this. That is all. I accepted it with such conviction that the knowledge has flowered into what has come. Out of food essence, the taste I am. The absolute has no taste, no color, no design. You cannot be witnessed by you. Only what is other than you can be witnessed by you. January 6th, 1981 After death, can I help other people to reach the light? After death, you will not remember that you are. You must know what death is. You are talking about existence after this life. Do you remember any past lives? I was on an island, helping other people in my last life. Do you remember your parents? No. What is the proof that you were born there? I don't know. This is only imagination, a fantasy, a concept occurring to you. If at the time of death the consciousness entertains a very strong concept, the consciousness can create that particular concept. Suppose that at the time of death the person imagines having a life somewhere. The consciousness will create a similar situation. The realm of consciousness is not eternal. The consciousness is a fraud. All of these things are illusions in the realm of consciousness. Consciousness is always manifested, isn't it? Consciousness will be there as long as a particle of space will be available. It is helpful to get into seclusion to realize that? Yes. To go out of the ordinary life? Not like that. You need not go out of your family life. What kind of seclusion? Even among this crowd, be alone. Abide in your own self. Focus your attention on yourself. Does it matter if one does not understand intellectually but simply has devotion? If you have that devotion, knowledge will proliferate out of it. When it is said that out of devotion somebody meets a god, it is not a personality god, but the devotee himself proliferates into the knowledge, into the profundity. He becomes godly. That god will be so long as the devotee knows himself. When the devotee subsides into nothingness, the god also subsides into nothingness. You have to come to the conclusion that in the final analysis, your balance sheet is nil. Out of the essence of the digested food in the body, the I amness is there. What you are presently is the outcome of this food material. If the food isn't available, where are you? What about all this profound knowledge which you have collected? Don't arrogate to yourself that doership of anything. It is all happening. If you are not, what is the need of all the disciplines, including God? Even if you are fully convinced about this, you are reduced to nothing. Nevertheless, on the deathbed, you will take the last drop of medicine to survive. This is real liberation, to know that you are nothing. All your knowledge, including yourself, is liquidated. Then you are liberated. If you think that you have done some great deed, then you will be planning to go to heaven. You are obsessed by concepts. You are not liberated. This knowledge is fit for that one who has devotion to the Guru. Only that person is fit to receive this knowledge. Although we have been listening to these talks for many years, we never feel exhausted. There is that fascination to listen to this again and again. You are not collecting words and storing them. You are getting the impact of the words and letting them go. January 10th, 1981 Does consciousness work through the mind? Everything takes place in consciousness. I have long ago given up my independent identity. There is no question of an independent entity. Everything is an appearance in consciousness only. As in any piece of cloth, the main element is the thread. So in any appearance, the essence is the consciousness. This must be deeply apperceived, and this cannot happen as long as there is identification with the body. As long as identification is there, you will think of benefiting only this pseudo-personality. 
The whole universe is alive as long as you have this consciousness. Once gone from you, nothing is there. Understand, there is a difference between someone who speaks from book learning and someone who speaks from experience. A yani identifies with the universal consciousness. And so there is a perfect adaptation to everything and every place. Only witnessing is taking place. The psychosomatic apparatus is there both for the yani and the ignorant. But the ignorant one who identifies with the body is happy or unhappy as the situation changes. The yani only witnesses. He is not individually concerned with what happens. I repeat again and again, please listen. Understand what it is because of which we feel alive. Understand the nature of it. Understand the taste of it. Then the body identification will go. This Atman Prem, self-love, this beingness has come about with no effort on your part. What is its nature, its taste? What is it? That you must find out. Fix your identity firmly in this beingness. Do not give it limbs, shape, or form. For once you give it form, you have limited it. Understand this energy which is behind the entire manifestation of the universe. You ask many questions. You look for the answers in books and words, not in intuitive experience. This is not knowledge. Knowledge springs from the consciousness without effort of its own accord. Various names have been given to this energy which is the source of all manifestation. People pray to these names and forms. They do not pray to that beingness, that substance which these names represent. Pray to that beingness only. As there is no separateness between two genuine friends, as a genuine friend knows the need of the other without speaking, who cares for him and does it spontaneously, so should you develop such a deep friendship with that substance, not in the attitude of praying for favors, but as a friend, seeking a friend. Be one with the knowledge I am, the source of sentience, the beingness itself. People think and talk about everything else except this basic thing, which I have told them. They are interested in scientific miracles. They make a science of God. They concern themselves with these shapes which are already manifest. They are not interested in the original miracle, this body and its life force. We ignore this miracle. If there is no consciousness, there is no God. The existence and essence of God are both in this consciousness and therefore in this body. How did these temples and churches come about? because of the inspiration of the consciousness within the body. The consciousness is the seed of Brahman, God, of everything. Events only happen and manifest when consciousness is there, and in the body is the consciousness. Nothing I say will benefit you in this world. I only tell you what you are. If you are seeking that kind of peace which is priceless, it can only be in establishing yourself in the consciousness with steadfast conviction. By conviction I mean never doubted, firm, unshakable, never wavering. Have that kind of conviction in your beingness. Think of nothing else. Pray to nothing else. Atman Prem. Because of it, everything is. At the moment of what is called death, what happens? All it means is that a speck of consciousness is given up. This speck is given up to a concept you have accepted as time. You reluctantly hand it over to time. The Yani gives it up to his own true nature. This Atman Prem, this existence, which we have protected for so many years, to whom shall we give it up? If ignorant to our concept of time, if ignorant Bhakti, devotee, to a concept of God, if Yani to his own true nature. Whatever you think you have got as an identity, have you acquired it by effort or intention? Is there anything you have really got? No. This body, this consciousness, has come spontaneously. So sleep comes when it likes. Even waking and sleep are not in your control. What is yours? Who has this knowledge of the self by his own effort? 
This pseudo-entity thinks that it is he who is active in doing. I am talking to you now as consciousness. Can any one of you give me an indication of that knowledge, that beingness that you are? Consciousness thanks consciousness over and over again. That about which nothing can be said I have said, except that drop, taste it, and swallow it. Hear this. God can only exist in the heart of man, not elsewhere. You identify with the body and limit yourself, and yet remember, do not neglect this body. This is the house of God. Take care of it. Only in this body can God be realized. It is only for an analytical understanding that God, your body, yourself, have been divided. But it is oneself. Each is intimately related. January 19th, 1981 This sense of presence. Is it not the most acceptable thing, as far as you are concerned? Do you not love it the most? Why are you sitting here? You are sitting here for yourself because you want something for yourself. What is it that you are? Go into that. You have no doubt that you are present, so what is it that makes you want to continue all the time? Eons of time have come and gone. During this time, millions of forms have been created and destroyed. Do they have a sense of being present? Are they worried about themselves? There is nothing you can do without this sense of presence, and there is nothing you can do to continue it. Why does it love to continue? That is its nature. Consciousness and love are the same thing. Ask yourself, what is it that you want? What are you after? You consider yourself an entity and want something. If consciousness were not there, would you need anything? What you hear is totally different from what you expected to hear. Am I to identify myself with consciousness? What is this you other than consciousness? Are they two? There is no entity who can do anything in the world. There is no entity who can do any spiritual search. If there is no entity, there is no bondage and no liberation. Just understand this. There is nothing to be done. Whatever I am telling you, hear it and discard it. Before you acquired this body and had this sense of presence, tell me what you had done. And after this sense of presence, the knowledge I am, then you have been shown a sort of TV film. This is your family. These are your parents. Do you personally have any experience of any of this? Understand what has been created and will be destroyed. Understand what you are that cannot suffer anything. I have come to the conclusion that consciousness and whatever appears in consciousness is nothing but a gigantic fraud. There is no one who has committed this fraud. It is a spontaneous happening. There is no perpetrator of this fraud. This speck of consciousness creates gods of mud and earth which having been accepted, give us whatever we pray for. Having understood this fraud, also understand that there is nothing that can be done about it. Therefore, all that can happen is for the understanding to take place. This body and the taste of the body, that is the understanding. Is not the body the essence of food and is not consciousness the nature of the essence of food? There is a very simple question one must keep in mind. What authority or control do I have over my own existence? Therefore, what can one do by one's own efforts? Understand that the total manifestation is the child of a barren woman. But having understood it, give full attention to your work and let that work be done as efficiently as possible. Take good care of that work that you do in the world because it is an orphan. January 20th, 1981 The absolute is. To give you an idea, there is a place in India where you have never been. If a description were given it, it would still remain a description for you. The universal consciousness, the beingness, is anything that is seen. When the universal consciousness manifests itself as a phenomenon, the phenomenon is that limited form which thinks that it is independent 
but is not. The phenomenon is the manifestation of consciousness. When it is not manifested, it is imminent in everything. If you think you have understood, it is not so. Anything that you know is not the truth. The body is made up of the five elements, and each body behaves according to the proportion of the combination of the five elements. So long as one is identified with the essence of five elements, it is impossible to understand, because that which is trying to understand is a pseudo-entity. The biggest drawback to understanding is the concept that I am an entity, and secondly, that any concept I have is the truth. It is only when it is understood with the greatest conviction that there is no entity, and what is happening is merely the program of the functioning of a consciousness. There is merely the functioning. There is no entity who is causing it, and there is no entity who is suffering. Only then can the disidentification take place. Otherwise, all kinds of misconceptions occur. You have not understood until you have solved the riddle of the one who thinks he has understood. Do I identify myself with the dirt which I blow from my nose? The stuff of which this body has been created, is it any different? I am neither the material from which the body has been created, nor the consciousness which is imminent in that material. January 27th, 1981 Where are you from, and who directed you here? I have been studying in a monastery in Thailand, and the abbot there suggested I read the books of Maharaja's teachings. When I decided to come to India, several friends who had been to see Maharaj told me to come here. Do you have questions? Will Maharaj explain what is the method of practice he recommends? There is no practice or discipline to be followed. Merely listen to me and accept what I tell you with firm conviction. What about the importance of meditation? The only thing which anyone has is the conviction that one exists, the conscious presence. Meditation is only on that sense of presence, nothing else. During the meditation period, one just sits and thinks of one's presence? Not as an individual sitting, but as the sense of presence without words. Meditate on that which knows you are sitting here. Your feeling that your body is here is identification with the body, but that which knows this body is sitting here is the expression of the Absolute. Is this known with the mind? Mind is the nature of material. You are not that material. You are that which understands the material. That sense of presence will explain anything that is necessary for you to understand. Your effort will not do it, but that sense of presence with which you become one will do it. Should I develop this sense of presence throughout the day in all my activities? It is not necessary for you to concentrate on it. It is always there. Whatever you do, the essence of it is the body-mind. Let the body-mind do its work, but understand that what is doing the work is not you. You are the sense of presence. Whatever efforts you make, either physically or intellectually, will be essentially the effort of the body-mind. There is nothing for you to do. Whatever happens will happen by itself, with your conviction that you are totally apart from body and mind. That sounds easy, but it must be very hard. Whatever you think, easy or hard, you stick to one conviction, that you are that sense of presence and are not the body-mind. That which you are has no shape or color. Does that sense of presence continue after the body and mind go? When the body goes, that sense of presence will go and consciousness will no longer be conscious of itself. When the body goes, everything goes? Correct. There is no experience of either happiness or unhappiness. There is no need of experience either. Is there nothing that continues? Nothing? You are thinking at a conceptual level. At that level, who is there who wants to know? Forget about that state. I would like to understand that. Whatever can be understood or perceived can never be the eternal truth. The unknown is the truth. 
I have no need of any experience, therefore I have no need to quarrel with anybody. The body-mind will go on doing whatever they like, during their natural course of duration. Is it better to do one thing than another? For instance, with this mind and body, I could just sit and do nothing, or I could go around helping people doing good things, which would be better to do. The body and mind will do whatever is natural for that combination. You can control things. For example, you can eat too much or drink too much, things like that. Or else you can do things, helping people, etc. These are the do's and don'ts regarding the body-mind, which you are not. That is the premise from where you have started. Understand that when there is no body, consciousness is not conscious of itself. So long as the body is there, the body must do its natural functioning. Then I just let it do what's natural. There is no question of your allowing it to happen. It will happen, and you have no control over it. But some things I can control if I come here or stay outside. I can control that. That is a misconception. Whatever happens, happens by itself. All this show or the expression of consciousness. The nature of it is change. It is the dance of the conscious presence. There are so many ways in which consciousness entertains itself. Many different forms, abilities, capacities are functioning. But the functioning is merely to entertain itself. When it is tired, it rests and sleep. When it awakes, it needs some kind of entertainment, some movement, some doing. They are all appearances in consciousness. Each will last according to its own duration. But basically, nothing that happens has any validity or importance. Until the awakening or understanding, you think that you are the doer. But once this apperception takes place, you know there is no entity that is working. I just think it would be best to do good things instead of bad things. What do you mean by good and bad things? Good things in one set of circumstances can be bad things in another set of circumstances. Even the things you consider good can be so only as long as the body lasts. Only a rare one will realize there is nothing to do. He is already that. Maharaj is helping us. Is that a volitional state? It is part of the total functioning. What is taking place is sort of a dream state, and whatever happens will be part of that dream. Whatever happens out of me, either spiritually or worldly, will not multiply in mind modifications, because any actions are universal and spiritual. The spirituality is perfect because of stabilization and the unknown. Many times, the witnessing of physical pain happens to me because the body and the consciousness are still there, an instrument to register pleasure and pain. Because of my health, the pain is registered more. I was witnessing that pain earlier, but since you have come, it is gone. When you are established in consciousness, it is full of joy only. I was established in that consciousness and full of joy, but suddenly the disease has appeared and the pain has come. So long as you are established in consciousness and do not have any physical disorder, you will not have any experience of pain. That is the quality of that consciousness itself. You are prior to the consciousness. In that state, there is no pleasure or pain. The association of the body and consciousness is something like this. You are a bachelor, and you are having a happy, free life. With the association with the wife, the pleasure and pain results begin. It is just like that. How can I acquire that state? It always prevails, but it is beyond knowing. That state cannot be elucidated. These are merely pointers. There it is. Words cannot enter that state. February 1st, 1981 Maharaj says that the world exists only when the consciousness arises in me. Does it mean that the world exists only so long as the consciousness exists, as far as I am concerned? The world exists so long as this sense of presence is there. The sense of presence is in consciousness. Not my consciousness or your consciousness, but universal consciousness. The total manifestation of the universe depends upon this sense of presence, the general sense of presence. 
when this sense of presence disappears, where's your universe? Other than the three states, waking, sleep, and I amness, I have no experience, but neither can I give up these three states. I am loaded with them. I cannot get rid of them. They have come without my knowledge. Nobody asked me if I wanted these three states. I do not consider any of you to be different from me. At the same time, as far as I am concerned, I have wiped out the total existence, and therefore, since there is no individuality, there are no bindings on the words that come out of me. With a giving up of individuality, all the poses go. That one is sannyasi, a yani, or something else. Along with the pose are restrictions. I am so-and-so. I must not say such-and-such. The whole thing is an illusion, merely entertainment. Consider from your own experience, is there anything constant? Even your image of yourself is always changing. My own experience is that nothing has really happened in this world. The seeker, the seeking, and the sought. None of these three is true. Nothing is happening. Everything that goes on in the world is a fraud. When will you come to an understanding or to peace? Only when you understand this fact and understand the spiritual truth. Only then will peace descend. What is the ultimate truth? You. You can get as frustrated and angry as you like. It does not disturb me at all. My state is unchanging. Are my experiences in meditation the truth? All experiences are in time. Time-bound. Truth is not time-bound. February 2nd, 1981 How can I make the surrender to the Guru permanent? Have you not been told that there is nothing permanent in this world? That is the search itself. What am I when this temporary state is gone and before it came? You have a clock which is made to last for 100 years. At the end of that 100 years, the clock stops. It served its purpose. When the clock of the body stops, the same thing happens. That body has served the purpose of consciousness. Total surrender means two, something joining, one surrendering to another. During that temporary state in consciousness, everything is correct. What of the plot of the story? It is correct. But the story is fiction. What I am telling you is absolutely open. An open secret. There is nothing that I keep hidden from you. Try and understand. It is merely a question of understanding. Guru's grace is always there. Guru is not an individual. You are thinking in terms of a form. The consciousness is all-pervading. You find out what is this you that is seeking grace. In that body the I am is ticking. That is the guru. You worship that I am principle and surrender to that guru, and that guru will give you all the grace. In consciousness there can exist nothing without its interrelated counterpart. The moment you say knowledge, knowledge can only be in ignorance. So this knowledge one has about guru is also ignorance. When will the knowledge be guru? When that knowledge and the ignorance both disappear in vyana. Yana is knowledge. Ajana is ignorance. Both disappear in vyana. I am caught in that process of watching the body-mind. Dream occurs in objective material manifestation. In the consciousness, it is not you. It is something other objective material. What you call I am in birth, you are not that. It is material. Suppose that there is a Muslim boy that I have adopted. I have not sired that boy, but I now claim him as my boy. Like that, this I amness is not directly me. It is something other, something material, something Muslim. I am not that. I, the Absolute, have nothing to do with that. People are sometimes confused because they expect an answer which is based on their concepts. You ask someone to bring you a spoon, and instead they bring you a needle. Both are words, both are knowledge, but that is not what you want. What you will receive is the true knowledge, even if what you are asking for is not the true knowledge. 
I must reach that level to be able to understand. There are millions of grains made into millions of forms, but the seed is only one. All these millions of forms are because of some particular seed, but I am not that seed. The ultimate knowledge does not have any knowledge. This knowledge I am has appeared spontaneously as a result of the body. See it as it is. Understand it as it is. When the waking state is gone, sleep begins. When sleep is gone, the waking state begins. When both are gone, I am at home. Why did they leave me? Because it was all foreign. It was not me. Take this advice. Better not to be trapped in the spiritual knowledge business. Have a nice time, a good life, be of service to others, and in due course, when the time is ripe, you will die. Without your advice, millions of people are already following your advice. February 3rd, 1981 The knowledge that I am expounding will dissolve your identity as a personality and will transform you into manifest knowledge. The manifest knowledge, the consciousness, is free and unconditioned. It is not possible either to catch hold of or give up that knowledge because you are that knowledge, subtler than space. This knowledge that you are the manifest must be open through meditation. You do not get it by listening to words. Is not this consciousness prior to any other experience, and is there not something on which this consciousness has come about? That waking state, deep sleep, and sense of presence, who has these experiences other than that which was prior to these experiences? That which is talking to you is that state which is time-bound, which has come temporarily upon my original state. Therefore you and I can have no sense of fear. It is only this changing state which has identified with the body, which has fear. The fear of death is the fine for accepting the identity of the body as a separate entity in the total functioning. It is only birth which fears death. Presence and absence are interrelated dualities. This was understood only after the sense of presence arose. Earlier there was no sense of either absence or presence. What if we understand only intellectually and we have not yet realized? The big advantage of even intellectual understanding is that you will not be bound by fear of death. Birth did not give you anything and death can take nothing from you. According to the world, I have this terrible disease. I keep on talking exactly as I talked earlier. It has no effect on me. Only that which has taken birth will disappear. How am I affected? You are fortunate to hear what I say. Listen, but do not make any effort to understand, because only your intellect can try to understand. An intellect does not reach that. What you have heard will have its own results. Do not interfere. Even if you have certain emotions of fear, etc., understand that they are of that chemical of which the body and mind are made. You have nothing to do with that temporary state. In the name of spirituality, many people commit a lot of atrocities on the body, thinking they will get superior knowledge. From where and what? What are they going to gain? This knowledge is, provided I am. February 17th, 1981 I am neither a guru nor disciple. This is all the play of the five elements. Body is just a biological development, a vegetation growth, and we take pride in it, asserting that I am somebody. But this is just a natural growth, just like plants. Is the experiencer eternal? If the experiencer had been eternal, he would not have made inquiries, asking what is this, what is that. Had he been eternal, he would already have had all the knowledge of this objective world. How can we find the way that is meant for us? If your urge to realize the self is very intense, your urge and the consciousness will direct you in the correct course. Sometimes, when I understand, something happens to me. 
I either get tense or I begin shaking in my head or neck, and sometimes there are noises going on in my head. I don't understand it. Should I ignore it or what? Just ignore it. Those are good signs. Physical sickness is there sometimes? It is not sickness. It is the expression of the five elemental body. Can one realize through Nama Mantra? So many sages have developed into the highest state only through Nama Mantra. Whatever you recite should merge into you prior to mind. Some people tell about Guru's giving power and energy. It is possible. I have deliberated only on myself. Trances, visions, samadhi, did Maharaj go through all those experiences? Any number of them, I did not take delivery of all those experiences. Why do some people go through it and others don't? The design of each seeker is different. According to the seeker's quality, he will encounter experiences. There have been so many self-realized sages, but each one's experience has been different because the qualities have been different. The experience of Rama and Krishna were different. Any yani discards the experiences. He does not get associated with them. He does not hang on to them or try to invoke them again. February 18, 1981 This identity with the body as an entity is present. Could anyone at any stage have done anything which could have prevented this identification? It is the nature of this beingness to associate itself with a form. How can an imagined entity separate itself? Is this wanting to be separate also natural, a part of nature? Yes, it is all part of natural functioning, part of the show. The entire thing is a concept. All that can be done is to understand. Look at the apparent contradiction. My own form is suffering. When that is known, more people come here, more people receive advantages. Those advantages happen automatically, spontaneously. I am not working for those advantages which you get. The talking which I do and your listening is part of the total functioning. You consider it as one individual listening to another individual. That is not so. What you hear is universal consciousness. This knowledge is not to be conveyed to a human being who is a spiritual infant. The human being is trying to collect benefits for an individual. When this identification is given up, the receptivity for the talks will be created. From an enormous tank of water you dip a tiny tumbler full and say, This is me. Whatever status and achievements one has attained will remain only as the name and form remain. Once they have gone, where is the entity who thinks he has achieved something? If this is deeply apperceived, how can anything in the world bother you? What I am talking about is this original concept, the consciousness, before which there was nothing. Whatever is in this original concept will remain only so long as the consciousness is there. Then we go back to our original state. When the consciousness exposes itself to you and shows you your true nature, then you will have no form. Without a form, can there be an image? The entire manifestation is a hallucination, the nature of which is to be inconstant. February 22, 1981 What should I do during the day? What kinds of thoughts or actions should I have in order to find out my true nature? and have peace of mind. Any thoughts or actions will be based on body-mind identity, and in order to see your true nature, there must be abandonment of this identity with the phenomenal center. This cannot come by any volitional action. It happens without any special efforts. There is no question of doing anything because there is no one to do anything. The mind can only work with some name or form or image. If you give this up, the mind will be helpless. What I am saying about your true nature is so simple that the mind cannot grasp it. What is has always been there. Give up conceptualizing, and what is remains. People will stop only at seeing the manifest. Who will go behind the manifest and see that the manifest and unmanifest are not two? 
they are one. The manifest is seen as light, the unmanifest as dark. But what is, is the same thing, that which perceives both. For the one who has abandoned the identification, it is simple. Words can only point at something. That which is neither like me or like you, is it not even aware of what it is? Only when consciousness is conscious of itself can there be knowledge of anything. It is prior to any knowledge. It is very simple. People who are considered to be very learned come here. How do I see them? I see them as being in total ignorance. Why is there a fear of darkness? Your question is totally irrelevant. Go to the source without which neither light or darkness could be cognized. What is the use of talking about what is objective when I have told you to go to the subject? I consider myself to be good or bad at different times. This can only be with identification with the body. Abandon this. From now on, I will only say what the position is. Thereafter, you must perceive. I have no physical resources for a dialogue. Whatever you hear cannot and will not go to waste. February 23, 1981 If you have really understood the core of the matter, no questions can arise. Questions arise only to an entity. The question is usually, what can I do? Where the I itself is not, who will want to know anything? Every manifestation is an appearance in consciousness, perceived and cognized by consciousness. There is only manifestation, functioning and perceiving. My mind is too agitated for consciousness to be in consciousness. You have not been listening carefully to what I have said. The words have not reached you. I have told you that consciousness is always there and anything that happens is in consciousness. So let consciousness remain in consciousness. Why do you, considering yourself as a separate entity, try to meddle in it? All that is, is consciousness. Can I ask about the meaning of suffering? Now you are developing a new concept, that there is something meaningful or profound behind suffering. This concept itself is going to strangulate you. Any concept erupting out of you, how can it give you knowledge? You must get rid of all concepts. You are the very basis, the foundation out of which concepts erupt. You are not concepts. You are prior to concepts. You must be firmly convinced about this. Do I suppress the concepts? Leave them alone. Watch the concepts erupting and disappearing. You are apart from concepts. Do not identify with them. I don't have the ability to do that. If you are not, where are the concepts? Where is the question of ignorance or knowledge if you are not there? That primary concept, I am, hangs on to the body as its identity. Hence all the trouble. Will you ever come to the conclusion that you are not the concept? February 28, 1981 When the body was formed, you did not bring any information with you. Later on, you collected information externally, and on that basis you are full of pride and conduct your dealings. Did you bring any information with you right from the beginning? No, I had no information. If you had no information, who is the customer for all this now? You have the primary information that you are which sprouted spontaneously in you. That was your primary capital, and all this further mischief is because of that primary information. Is it not so? That is true, yes. Do you understand what it is to have your own being, to be? I do not clearly understand. It is not to be understood through words. Whatever knowledge you derive out of words is ignorance only. To be is not to be understood. It is. It is just a feeling. Who knows the consciousness? Consciousness knows itself. Consciousness understanding consciousness. By this method you will not have emancipation. You have to ask yourself, Who knows this beingness? If I know that I am at a particular point, then it means that prior to that point, I did not know that I am. 
That which was not aware of its existence became aware of its existence when the consciousness came. And this consciousness is only the nature of the physical body. It is made of material and is therefore temporary. There is no knowledge in the absolute. All knowledge is only in the grasp of the five senses and words. Suppose these three, the waking state, deep sleep, and the knowledge I am are not there. What are you? Just knowingness, consciousness. Is this knowingness, consciousness, in your association continuously, forever? No. Then give it up. Why do you lean on that which will not be your association eternally? All our scriptures say that only the Parabrahman is the truth. Nothing else is. And you are that, eternally. Why do I separate myself from that? When nothing else but that prevails, how can you be separate from it? There is a poem written by Yanaswara to that 1,400-year-old sage. One line says, The vision of knowledge becomes weaker and weaker. What is the meaning of that? The vision of consciousness will also drop off in the ultimate analysis, because knowledge and ignorance are in the realm of consciousness. I do not want to let go of a single word of yours. How long are you going to hang on to words and the meaning of words? How long? They are useful so long as the I am is there. This I am is a concept also, is it not? And you want to hang on to this concept also. This I amness is not going to remain in your association, and when it goes, everything relating to that I amness goes. When this is the state of affairs, what is the use of trying to gain or assimilate knowledge? Words are not exactly applicable. I have seen exactly how I am not. In the absence of I am, what that state is, I have seen or am seeing. Therefore, I don't lose anything. In that state there is no question of seeing or experiencing, but for the sake of communication we have to borrow these words. These are great men, full of wisdom, profound. But how do I look at them? They are just like me. This one is a legal luminary and a Sanskrit scholar. With the combined effect he is trying to capture Parabrahman in his words. He is very good at it. But what is the gain? To realize that my state is without concepts. That itself is the gain. You are standing on a concept I am and trying to paint that with another concept. This is a different kind of court. The lawyer is hauled into the dock. March 1st, 1981 Is this I amness which everybody has the same thing as consciousness? Other than this consciousness and I amness, what is there that can claim I am? Understand that this I is not different at different levels. As the absolute, it is the I which in manifesting needs a form. The same absolute I becomes the manifested I, and in the manifested I, it is the consciousness which is the source of everything. In the manifested state, it is the absolute with consciousness. You may think that you consider yourself to be consciousness, but you generally keep on wanting something as an entity, even if it is spiritual knowledge. The body is only an instrument by which consciousness manifests itself. It has no separate autonomous identity. This body which you love so much is time-bound, and this consciousness which depends on the material body is also time-bound. The vital breath is the active element which keeps the body in action. Consciousness is the passive element. The vital breath will leave the body after a certain span of time and leave dead material. The consciousness will also leave the body and merge with the universal consciousness. This is the normal process. Within this, what is it you consider yourself to be? This is merely a functioning. There is no separate entity. Actually, our true identity is known to everyone. There is no doubt about it. But because of identification with the body as an entity, what is definitely known to us is being forgotten. Listening to what I say may give you a temporary sense of peace and pleasure. But so long 
as you consider yourself a separate entity wanting spiritual salvation, all this is useless. There is no entity that can benefit from the listening that takes place. What is birth, after all? Birth is only the waking state, deep sleep and sex. Suppose the sex is removed. Then there will be no interest. The sex cannot fill your stomach, cannot provide you with food, but that is necessary. It is easier to understand that the entire manifestation is of the nature of a dream or a mirage. But you interpret the rest of manifestation as being a mirage and won't let go of the seer of the phenomenon. The seer is also part of the mirage. March 6, 1981 If you have any questions, I will try to answer them. This moment now of this particular situation is a very peculiar one. You need not talk if you don't want to. You may merely sit. Merely sitting here at this particular time will be of great benefit. The moment, the auspicious symptom, and it will give the most amazing results. Incredible. This moment itself, this touch of I amness, is just a pinprick, just a touch. If you are perceived what I have said, there is no reason to visit me again. What I have told you is not something to be wondered over or pondered over for a period of time. It is a matter to be apperceived immediately. Have you had this way of expounding knowledge anywhere else in quietude? At Ramana Ashram, everybody was silent there, too. How long were you with, Ramana? Only a short while. How is it that I have been so fortunate as to find Maharaj now? Something good you have done in your past life. If you had not done your homework, you would not have visited this place. The rare, lucky ones will visit this place and listen to the talks. I am having different experiences of warmth, seeing light, and I am afraid. Don't worry about any experiences. Try to abide in the experiencer. The experiences are good indications of your development, but don't stagnate at the level of experience. I usually feel that I am this or that, but I am losing this. I am feeling more detached, not interested in the world. During the experience of the shedding away of these concepts, I feel a sense of death and fear. Yes, it will go on like that. So long as you are, such things are bound to happen. You have to transcend the I am. If you are alert, focusing your attention on the moment, the I am is a continuous moment. You transcend the I am. March 8, 1981 Can we understand our real nature through consciousness? Can we grasp it? Is there any other instrument through which you can understand your true nature? Whatever is can be perceived by all, is perceived by all. Who wants to grasp it? You, as a separate entity, want to know that which is, as the Absolute. It can't be done, because you are the Absolute. Where does the one who has attained samadhi go? The seeker himself has disappeared. If the seeker is a concept, then the guru is also a concept. Yes, but that guru is the support for all seeking. So long as there is word, there is seeker. When the word vanishes, there is nothing. I have experienced all four kinds of speech and transcended them. Rarely will anybody follow this hierarchy to stabilize in the consciousness and transcend consciousness. Starting from Vaikhara, word, normally we listen to words. From Vaikhari, we go to Madhyama, mind thought. In watching the mind, we are Pasayanti, where the concept formation takes place, and from there, to Para, I am, without words. And finally, from Para, to Prior, to consciousness. This is the line to follow but only a rare one follows it, receding, reversing. Is deep sleep and the state prior to the I am one and the same? As a concept, it is the same thing, until you become that. Then there will be no one to know. Not only that, but whatever actions are done, whether through you or me, are originally done within that state of deep sleep. In sleep, you dream. This being awake state is the primary dream. The dream in the sleeping state is the secondary dream. It is the transformation of the primary dream. 
In this state of consciousness, in the primary dream, the entire universe is created, and when it is realized, that is a dream. Then you are awake. Both dreams are consciousness. Then the actor cannot know that he is dreaming. That is exactly the beauty of Maya, the whole heart of it. Understand that the basis of whatever dream it is, is consciousness. March 9th, 1981 This sense of entity that one has, which has been created by the mind when the consciousness itself disappears, what happens to that sense of entity? Is there anyone who knows that he is dead? It is only the others who say that he is dead. If the consciousness and the mind were the ultimate truth, then all those millions of forms which have been created and destroyed would have the knowledge of their existence. In this country, in this life, you acquire something. But the rule of the land is that whatever has been acquired cannot be taken out of the country. Whatever you acquire is because of consciousness. But the law of the land of this life is that nothing can be taken away. Once consciousness disappears, everything is gone. How does man behave in the world? He forgets what it is that is really functioning. He forgets that the forms are only instruments for the functioning of consciousness. He considers himself an entity and spends his whole life working hard trying to achieve something. The motivation for all this is the sense of me and mine. All kinds of forms are being created and destroyed continuously. That is part of the functioning. If there is nothing to be achieved by an entity, then what is the purpose of this spiritual seeking? What is to be understood is, all that is functioning is the consciousness. No entity is involved. Then what is the use of understanding? There is no benefit for any supposed entity. There should be no sense of even a benefit out of this understanding. You are the understanding. Who is to get the benefit? That which apprehends this has no shape or form. The forms are created from the five elements. At the end of their span of time, they are destroyed. If you live for hundreds of years, nothing will be of any benefit to you. I have obviously understood all of this, and yet I have made sufficient provision for my new flat to be constructed. Understand what might appear as contradiction, but there is no contradiction so long as one sees all this as part of total functioning. Would this appear to any normal person as something reasonable? Can Maharaj tell us how the different traps can be separated and avoided? You had better get some hefty people to cut up the five elements into little bits. Then you will have this separation. It is just one. Consciousness itself is the trap. Forget all your other questions and merely concentrate on the source of this consciousness because of which everything else is. How did this body arrive? And within it, this consciousness which is latent. Find out the source of this. Maharaj has brought us back to the root. I threw you at the root and buried you, and in that state in which I have buried you, there is nothing to be known, because in that state, consciousness is not. Once this is clearly perceived, so long as the body is there, life must go on. But life appears merely as a series of entertainments. You should understand from what standpoint I am talking. If you understand, you take it. Otherwise, you leave it. Nobody in the world will tell you so bluntly. When you really intuitively understand what I mean, then you will come to the end of spirituality. March 10th, 1981 Why does the identification seem to change constantly? In consciousness, the identification with an individual will keep on changing. But once the identity is lost, it is possible to remain in total manifestation. Can I reach the absolute state while consciousness is there? In that state there is no one to be conscious, so there is no question of reaching that state so long as consciousness is present. But I thought that Maharaj said that state is where knowledge is absorbed in knowledge, and knowledge is not aware of itself. 
The instrument has to be there, and consciousness is the instrument. In consciousness, consciousness is conscious of itself. But in the state prior to the arising of consciousness, who is there, and with what instrument can one be conscious? In that state which is not tainted by anything, there is no conditioning. Take the example of space. In space there is darkness and light. The space is there whether darkness or light is there. In the same way the state prior to consciousness is always there. Right now it is there. It is the substratum of everything. A yani is one who abides in that state of space in spite of body and mind. What is the practice? Is it meditation only? You must possess that firm confirmation that you are formless, designless. Not only rely on meditation. Always insist that you are formless, free, and are not conditioned. You must hammer on this constantly. That is the practice. I have longer times when I am disassociated from the body-mind. I don't understand what is happening to me when I see the body act and feel outside of it. What is wrong with that? You must have a strong conviction. That conviction means practicing. That conviction means not only I am, but it means I am free from I am also. You know you are without words. Just be that. You are not to think or imagine anything. Before it occurs to you that something is, you must be. You must be there in order to meditate. When you wake up the first thing in the morning, at that moment you know only you are, emerging from deep sleep to a waking state. Later on you think I am so and so, etc. In meditation I hear sounds and visions. To hear something you must be there. That state is a most godly state, but it is more important to be yourself. There is always fear. The fear is because of ignorance. It is not external sound. It is the manifestation of your consciousness. The godly illumination is there, provided the self-effulgence is there. To see the God, you must be there. To get to know the knower is difficult. It is something like knowing a township. It is not individualistic. It is manifestation. When you are that manifest consciousness state, it is something like a deep, dark, blue state. You are in the homogeneous, deep, dark, blue state. That is the first step of beingness. From that deep, dark, blue, self-effulgent, homogeneous state into no knowingness state. That is your true identity. It is a no knowingness state. A total, complete, perfect state. In that knowingness state, everything is imperfect. It is never complete. That is why you want more and more. In spite of plenteousness, the knowingness state is incomplete. What is the effect at death? The effect is upon those who know that the person is dead and gone. There is no effect on the one who is dead and gone. He doesn't know he is dead and gone. The body is made of food, and the true you is not in this body. A lot can be said, but you will not be able to receive what I say. Suppose I say that you are not, the Brahman is not. Will you understand? You are so much obsessed by death because of your identification with the body. Because you are thinking of death, death is sure for you. But if you are the self, there is no question of death for you. March 11th 1981. By reading the book of Maharaja's talks, I feel great freedom and joy. I think I am experiencing the living word. What is it which was experiencing this? It was the sense of presence. I have read so many books, but this was a new revelation, a new experience. Why don't I get the same experience from other books? I am not going to accept any of your compliments. Your questions are from the body-mind level and you will accept the answers on the same level. You are riding the horse of body identification. I wanted to know why I got such experiences from reading your book and not from others. I am not interested in your experiences. I am interested only in you. The talker and the listener are one. Most of the others who come here may be said to be in a state similar to that of having had a really good dinner. They have had their fill and now they are chewing the cud. 
like a cow. They are not interested in further food. That is why there is no questions. If someone like you doesn't arrive and ask questions, there will be no questions. You have come to seek knowledge and you are knowledge. Dakshinamurti taught his disciples in silence. Hang Dakshinamurti, that is hearsay, something you have read or heard. What is your experience? I am here and you are here. Ask questions. Why is it that some die young and others live a long life? Will there be birth or death without the consciousness or self? When you say they die young or live long, those that are born, actually what logic does the self know? Does the sun know when it sets or rises? First understand what it is that is born and then this mystery will be solved. The body is born. The self is not born. If the self is not there, can the body be born? What do you understand by the word birth? Are you born? As long as we identify with the body, we are born. I talk only to the consciousness about the consciousness. The common man will not understand. What is the way to understand? What is there to do? The quickest way. Understanding and being in that true nature is the task. There is no other God than this sense of presence, and I am this sense of presence. Understanding this with conviction is the quickest way. Understand that original state when there was none other. That is true knowledge, my true nature. Plenty of avatars have come and gone, but that space is there all the time. How does one overcome basic ignorance? What is it that understands there is something like ignorance? Knowledge understands. Understand that you are that knowledge and forget about ignorance. Any beautiful music, when it is heard, any dancing girl, when she dances, if by all this nobody is moved, he is either a yanni or a donkey. Here is a room full of such people who will not be moved by the beauty of anything. I am in that state where there is total absence of any concept of presence or absence. You are also in that state, but you don't know it. My consciousness is not very effective. There is no recognition now of anybody as an individual or person. If you feel like sitting, you are welcome. Whenever you feel like going, you can go. March 14, 1981 By the grace of Maharaj, I find that now my eyes are able to see and my ears are able to hear. What the eyes see and the ears hear is only the faults. Both will disappear. You are that which witnesses. What is understood and practiced by the common Hindu man as spirituality is that water from the river is carried in a vessel and poured over an image of God. Some of these images have been placed so that one has to climb 500 steps to reach them. This is considered to bring great merit. They collect water in brass vessels and banadis from the Ganges. They carry that water walking all the way to South India, to Rameshwara, and pour it over the idol and they will take the sea water from Rameshwara back to Benares and pour it over the head of the idol there. This is their concept of liberation. Water is taken from one place and carried to another. What a strenuous concept! What we hear at the feet of Maharaj is something that is ever new. What I am telling you about can never be new or old. It is unchanging, everlasting. This consciousness in which concepts arise is itself a concept, and so long as consciousness remains, all other concepts will continue to arise. The absolute unmanifest is what is. Whatever we think about that absolute state can only be a concept, until the consciousness ends and we are in that absolute state. One achieves something and one guards it, but how long can you guard it? Only until you are in deep sleep. You have found a concept and you hang on to it all day. 
In deep sleep, where's the concept? How does Maharaj talk to us if he does not accept individuality? The sun does not shine for individuals. The words come out of consciousness spontaneously as part of the total functioning. There are any number of experiences, some of them you like, and you keep them in your memory and pamper them. That itself is suffering. All your experiences should be just part of the total functioning, happening spontaneously. March 15, 1981 I am not inclined to collect more people and expound knowledge because I am not able to deliver myself as something tangible to you. Krishnamurti is talking. I am also talking. There is no substance in that. You are recording the talks and writing it down. In the final analysis, there is no substance in that. Once it is realized that it is only a total functioning of the manifest consciousness, and there is no individual entity, there will be no question of liberation, of birth or death, or of a doer doing anything. Normally, in the name of spirituality, knowledge is expounded. Knowledge is in the realm of the five elements, and it is talked about as real or unreal as long as the knowledge I am is there. It is a product of the knowledge I am. A yani is that state from which witnessing of the knowledge I am takes place. In that yani state, there is no touch of I amness. It is a qualityless state. It is not knowledge. Knowledge means I amness. Suppose there are no thoughts. Time has stopped, but space will be there. A thought free state is something like space. Space like. I am the witness that the thought free state is there. That is the self. I am. The being. Because the being is there, having removed all the pollution, including thought. Time is also gone, and space and beingness is there. When that state ends, it is the absolute state. A something, sweet like state. You are just playing with words and the meaning of words. You don't go to the root from where the words emanate. Nobody goes to the root. They are fascinated by the display. When the support of the body-mind is not available, what are you then like? I am in the state beyond suffering and enjoyment. It is said that when knowledge is realized, the devotion persists still, but actually, there is no personality left. There is no question of devotion. Devotion to whom? However, they say that devotion is there. It might be for the guidance of other seekers. March 16, 1981 Even in the highest saints, there is always some doubt about the clarity of I am, and this inquiry of what I am must be gone into at any and all levels. The importance and significance of the inquiry is that no one can give you an answer to this inquiry except yourself. Each one, as I, has to find out what this I is. The merest description that can be given to this consciousness is that it is as fine, as subtle as space. Immaturity or consciousness is God. That original state prior to the arising of consciousness cannot be described. One can only be that. I keep on repeating that whatever one listens to ultimately means nothing, because whatever I am, that is exactly what you are. Any action that one takes depends on a certain image that one has about oneself, and that image remains only so long as consciousness is there. Is this clearly understood? People come here with a certain set of concepts. I hold the mirror before them of what they are as phenomena, and ultimately they realize that as phenomena, they are nothing, and when consciousness departs, they will reach their original state, which was there before the body-mind consciousness arose. In that original state, there was no experience. Even now, any experience that one thinks one has is only a concept. In that state, before consciousness arose, there was no query of, who am I? because there was no one who wanted to know that answer. This question arises only in consciousness. Anything in consciousness is only a concept, and therefore it has to be wrong. 
out of millions of people, why do only some come here? Obviously, it is when consciousness has this inquiry in consciousness that it brings people here. Is the I am a concept or the only reality? I am is only a few letters. Has anyone been able to keep this I am in his pocket for all time? My am, but without words. Yes, if whoever feels this I am had knowledge, would he have cared to become this I am? No, he would have said, I don't want this consciousness. I understand. You are unreal. You know that you are. That is also unreal. The sense of presence is an untruth. It is like a dream. How can this I amness be the source of misery? Try to find out when this concept of happiness and unhappiness arose. It was not there until I had this consciousness. Everybody loves this sense of presence and wants it to continue for all time, but they don't go further into the past and find out whose ecstasy created this sense of presence. Because of some physical ecstasy, lasting only for an instant, the speck of consciousness in which the entire universe is contained has come into existence. I don't feel the misery of I amness. I feel that everything is right. Does it mean that I don't want to look at the misery? You cannot do anything. You have to enjoy what is. Is it not so? To suffer or to enjoy? You have no choice. Nevertheless, experiences will be there. You may not be involved in the experiences, but so long as the I am is there, experiences will be there. The magic, the art of this consciousness is that it has not only hidden the fact that it is the source of all misery, but has made itself the source of all apparent happiness. March 17th, 1981 What does Maharaj mean by Linga Deha? It is the seed, the chemical, the product of the five elemental essences which give rise to and sustain the consciousness I am. Just like the seed of a tree, that seed latently contains all future manifestations and expressions of the tree that will sprout out of that seed. You take a fountain pen, and on the paper you put a drop of ink. So that drop is the linga dea. That drop is the moment of conception. Its expression is the thought-free state, like space and the knowingness state. That is the quality of knowingness, space-like. There is no concept, but its expression is the physical, tangible. Just imagine it is infinitesimal, but its expression is manifest infinity. Foreigners understand, but when the Indians come, they listen to the talks, but they are attached to all their bodily relatives. At Lingadeha level, when you worship your guru, you are the expression of guru in so many ways. You will be experiencing so many things at such a level. But all of that has emanated out of you only, not of your love and devotion for Guru. And finally, as you evolve, all those expressions merge into you. This is very important. This is the consummation of devotion, or Saguna Bhakti. That Linga Deha, that little drop, and the knowledge I am, is the same. What we see is the manifest world which appears in that speck of consciousness. As sweetness is the nature of sugar, so this speck of consciousness is the nature of that drop of Lingadeha. The parents, the source of the Lingadeha, are merely an excuse for preparing that which was conceived. Your true state was there before the body and consciousness arose, is there now, and will be there after the body and consciousness go. Somebody may challenge what I am saying. I have never had any doubt about what you are or who you are, because I have understood my true state, what I am, I know you are. Some people will spread this illumination, but it will be the foreigners, not the Indians. At a later date, people will question, was there really such a person who expounded knowledge in this way? March 18th, 1981 There is no duality between the Guru and the Bhakta. In that which is, there is no duality, has never been any duality. 
The word bhakta means devotion, but in actuality it indicates togetherness, one only, unity. The flame of devotion lights my way. Who speaks about that flame? When we talk, we don't talk about the person, but about that dynamic manifest flame I am. That is not extinguishable. Who says that? I believe that, because it is your belief, is it right? I have no proof. You are running. Who talks about the proof? With your faith, whatever you are worshipping and devoted to, that you will get. The trouble about your spirituality is that you are listening only to that knowledge about Iswara, which is useful to an entity. You are collecting only that knowledge. As a man, an entity, this is a temporary phase of your emotions or sentiments. No person will be able to conserve his personality or identity forever. That guiding principle is not a person. Nowadays, I don't expound any theme of spirituality. I don't even talk, but still, why the attraction which brings you here? With this, I develop my encumbrances. I have nothing to gain in this bargain except these encumbrances. Do you know the ingredients of that personality? Unless you get to know that fully, you will not go beyond. What about my desires, my needs? You are in need of yourself. Is there any involvement between my desires and the raw material? Plenty of involvement. Out of the interaction and play of the five elements, this food body is available. In that, the fragrance and taste is the knowledge I am. Now you find out what is the indication that you are in this food body. Would fasting help me to find myself? Not at all. The I amness is the very expression of the food. Suppose you want to find sweetness. Sweetness is the quality of sugar. If you reject sugar, where's the sweetness? Then I always have to go outside myself to food to get this taste. Can you get the food from inside? The supply comes from outside. I have always been led to believe that this sense of presence did not depend on body. That is the essence of spirituality, and now you tell me the opposite. Therefore, understand this mystery itself. Where does the world exist? It exists in this speck of consciousness, and this consciousness can exist only if there is food. Whatever life you are living, you are only entertaining a concept. Find out, is there such a thing as an individual? Think it over. If the entertainment of the experiences is easy, if it pleases you, you call it happiness. If not, you call it unhappiness. The feeling that you are, the sense of presence, what has caused it to come about? Think about it. Think on it. Everything is happening because I am. Will you be able to retain this understanding always? Just for a moment and then the identification comes back. It's a long way to get the understanding stabilized that everything is happening because I am. Now, for how many days will you be in India? I have only a few more days here. It is not important where you are once you are established in the I am. It is like space. It neither comes nor goes. Just as when you demolish the walls of a building, only space remains. March 20th, 1981 my personality or individuality is thrown to the winds. There is no more there. What you are visiting is only the Dukkha Bhagavan, the god of sorrow. Bhagavan is this manifestation, but sorrow only. It is not involved in thought or activities. It is just the manifestation. I am the total functioning, and whatever in the functioning at the moment has certain significance, that I am. It is only by taking the aid of this consciousness which is suffering that I am talking. This kind of experience happens only to a very rare one. Don't ask anything, just listen. This consciousness, this manifestation, this functioning has no shape, form, or color. Would Maharaj explain more about Dukkha Bhagavan? Dukkha means pain, suffering, agony. Bhagavan means not only God, it is indicative of explosiveness, a flash, an explosive flash. 
world perception, with the appearance of I amness. When there is an explosion of fireworks, there is a crashing sound, a flash of light, and lighting up of the surrounding area. Similarly, the I am explodes into being, and the whole perceptible universe is conjured up. But consciousness, the I amness, gives rise to inadequacy, imperfection, and therefore the beginning of sorrow, misery, etc., and the settling into body mind sense, from perfect to imperfect, from no being to being, in the reverse direction, from body mind to beingness to absolute, then the consciousness state is a godly state. Why is there so much pain and unhappiness in this world? Because you are always in search of happiness. Happiness and unhappiness are interrelated. If you did not have unhappiness, how would you recognize happiness? March 23, 1981 I am that which represents the absence of what is seen. If you try to accommodate what I say within this concept that you are a human being, it cannot be done. In spite of listening to all I have said, most of you will continue to identify yourself as a body, and you will look on me as an individual. But I am not that. My real presence is the absence of the phenomena that you see. My sleep is not the kind you have. It is pure consciousness. When I sleep, there is awareness of total manifestation and also the unmanifest. There is no distinction between an individual and the total universe. You think that I am ill, but that is because you identify me with the body. I consider this illness as an extraordinary state which comes to the lot of a rare one so long as the individuality exists in the form of a body. But the importance of that is impossible to describe. That state is full of suffering. Nevertheless, it is full of significance and it comes to a rare one. The question of what one is comes only in manifestation, in comparison with other phenomena. In my state, there is no phenomenon. My existence is prior to any manifestation. There is no question of who or what I am. Would Maharaj repeat what was said earlier about that state where there is no phenomenon? Once it is said, it is gone. The correct way of listening is to concentrate on the words which reveal your own identity. Forget all other things. You arrive at your identity as that state which was prior to words. Words cannot satisfy that. This consciousness, because of which everything else is, is itself merely the light of that which is, a reflection of that which is. The average person who considers himself a seeker worships the various concepts not his true being. Would Maharaj talk some more about the state which was prior to consciousness? What is the point? Anything you can think of that state is only a concept, and that concept will last only so long as the consciousness is there. Only the experiencer remains, unsmeared by any experiences, even the experience of remaining. I am nothing, but how dare I talk like this? because I know none of the experiences have remained with me. You will not find anyone so blunt as I. Everyone is concerned with these experiences from birth to death, but no one gives any thought to that state before experiencing began. One who has a clear understanding of this consciousness cannot attach any importance to any experience. I want to give up this identity with the body. I want to find out who I am. How do I go about it? If you do not have the knowledge I am, who is going to seek? You must be. Only then can the search begin. Remember the knowledge I am. That alone pervades everything. Be only that. Give up the rest. When I think I am, then immediately come thoughts of the things that I am. I know that comes from the mind. Before you think you are. In the space, all movement happens. For any appearance or any movement, the space must be there. From the question, who am I, there is no reply, but you may reply any way you like. You can give it any name or title you like. 
People do not go to the root meaning of whatever is heard or read. They just repeat, parrot-like. I take a serious objection to people just reciting the bhajans, parrot-like. How many people have understood the meaning of certain couplets sung at bhajans? The sun and the moon are the reflections of that very principle, I am. Spirituality is open, and at the same time, it is a mystery. Because you are all the worlds the universe is. This is your reflection. If you want to know what you are, that is all given in the bhajans. If you close your eyes and almost forget yourself, half asleep, that is exactly what you are. But if you want to get a glimpse, the first vision that you get is that deep blue space that is the very idol of beauty, the image of beauty. Very often I have elucidated this point, but rarely has anybody been able to catch what I am driving at. At Bajans I used to stress certain couplets by shouting loudly, but nobody understood what I was doing. I was stressing certain couplets so that people would go deeper into the meaning of it but they were only shouting louder. Not only was I loudly stressing that particular line, but I used to repeat it. I was inspired to shout those lines at the top of my voice. You are the speck of consciousness, and out of that the entire cosmos is created. I was deeply devoted to the singing of bhajans, because it was providing all the spiritual nourishment. Whenever I used to strike the profound meaning of a particular bhajans, I used to dance in the room. I have all the exuberance to dance and sing now, but there is no energy. After that, I never went to any sage or saint. However, many sages and saints visited me. But unfortunately, I did not meet anybody who considered the sun and the moon and the universe as their expression. Such a sage I did not come across. Although I do not know Marathi, I have felt the deeper meaning of the bhajans intuitively. Many people do bhajans here but they are not able to grasp the deeper meaning. Many of the foreigners are able to catch the deeper meaning. You, the foreigners, have that advantage because all of you who are interested in this were in your previous incarnation the army of that great incarnation, Rama, followers of Rama. So you were already blessed at that time. In further incarnations, you migrated to the east. You are more at home in this place than the Indians are. Foreigners recognize me, but people in the street don't know me, because that great Rama blessed all his army, all his followers, at that time. I admire the foreigners. Not only do they come thousands of miles to be here, but they spend so much money to stay in Bombay. Unless there were that deep urge, we would not come. That is your very destiny. In that chemical which you are, that urge is already planted therein. You people come here and sit, with determination to get what you want. Therefore, I have great respect and great regard for you. March 25th, 1981 Treat the body like a visitor or a guest which has come and will go. You must know your position as a host very clearly while the guest is still there. What is the exact nature of the host after the guest leaves? must be realized while the guest is present. Have you understood? Give me some idea of that position in which you will find yourself when this body guest leaves. There is no identity. Good. Is this a firm conviction? Yes, in the meditation. What is the significance of the guest, the sign? As soon as the guest comes, there is the sense of identity as a host. The sense of presence, I amness, is the sign of the guest. Are your answers out of deep conviction? Yes. Then there is no need to come tomorrow. It is only in deep meditation that I know it. Do you accept completely the knowledge that you do not exist? There are moments in meditation when I really feel this conviction. It is not a firm conviction if it is not there all the time. When one is very sleepy, just at that point of going into deep sleep, at that point, he wants nothing else except to go to sleep. Similarly, at the last moment, when the breath is leaving, there is also a moment of ecstasy. At that point, when the life force and consciousness leave, there is that moment of ecstasy, that last moment. 
of knowing. One who has thoroughly apprehended this is a yani, to whom there is no question of birth or death. Even if you hear this and think it is true, the conceptualizing will not stop. Already some concept has begun in you. Whatever I have told you now is only about that speck of I amness. Would Maharaj tell us more about the moment of death? Nothing more can be said about it. It is the culmination or termination of the self-experience I am. After the termination of I amness, there is no experience of knowingness or not knowingness. The knowingness is the quality of the material stuff. What did you know prior to your birth? Similarly, after death, this instrument is missing. Without the body, there is no experience. Eternity has no birth and no death, but a temporary state has a beginning and an end. Even when the consciousness goes, you prevail. You always are as the absolute. As the consciousness, you are everything. Whatever is, is you. All this knowledge has dawned on me, and I am not that knowledge. The knowledge I am and all its manifestations are understood. In understanding, I am not that. March 26th, 1981 The only knowledge you will get here is knowledge of the self. It will not help you to make a living in the world. Do you have any idea what your true nature is? Since you have understood what you are not, you should no longer be concerned with what you are not. Is that clear? Yes. You still have an idea of what you are, but even that image must be totally erased, so that there is no idea of any entity, any identification. Now that you think you've understood what you are, what use will you make of the consciousness? Any use of the consciousness will be for others. The grace of the Guru is necessary in order to understand. The grace is always there, but the receptivity must be there to accept that grace. One must have the firm conviction that what is heard here is the absolute truth. Instead of becoming impregnated with what I give you to the extent that you are one with it, you merely accept it and put it in your pocket and keep on using concepts which you have accumulated already. None of you will really understand what I am. You have your own concepts of me. I have understood with the intellect what can I do to realize it. There is nothing you as an entity can do. That which has taken root will by itself flower into intuitive understanding. This understanding will take some time. This is not a concept. The very concept is a hazard. When my guru told me what the position is, I listened and said, Oh, this is how it is. And that was that, the end of it. If there are no more questions, I will close the session. I am not here to keep a watch over you. If you really understand what has been said, there is no reason to come again. And if you can't understand, then what is the use of continuing? On occasion, there is a spontaneous feeling of universal love. Is this based on body-mind or is it something else? Total love is the very nature of consciousness. When this feeling arises, there is nothing you can do. How can one embrace the entire ocean? March 28, 1981 What is the relation between consciousness and the intellect? Intellect is the expression of consciousness. We understand and perceive everything through the intellect only. Things to be done must be done. Things to be understood must be understood. Things to be done are normally your present worldly life, and these you must carry out. In spirituality, you have to understand there is no question of doing. In spirituality, there is no name and form. Name and form are necessary for your practical worldly life. The one who understands that name and form are not his identity is in spirituality. Presently, you are still drawn towards name and form. Your identity in the phenomenal world as name and form is temporary, a passing show. And anything related to name and form is not going to remain. One who understands spirituality through various concepts will be caught up in a vicious circle. 
If you are caught up in concepts, you will be caught up in the circle of concepts. Rebirth, reincarnation, these are all concepts. If you are caught up in these concepts, you are bound to have them. Out of concepts, the forms are created, such as buildings, etc. Originally, you make a plan. You have a concept, the concept is born out of you, and you give it a concrete shape, but it remains a concept. With the experience of so-called birth, you are caught up in the cycle like the picture on the TV screen. All this life happening is something like a cinema. You must have observed daily that situations are constantly changing. That is the quality or expression of your identity with the body-mind. It is the consciousness that is playing about. And in that manifest consciousness, all these various faces and bodies are playing about. You are not these faces and bodies. You are the consciousness out of which the words are now flowing. Just as the play you see on the TV or cinema screen is not real, similarly this play is also not real. For Yanni all the play is unreal. I'm not going to give you solutions to your family problems. I am telling you how this worldly life is not. After listening to these talks, you still want to gain some profit for yourself. That is a pity. How astonishing it is. In spite of my discouraging you from coming here, still you come here. How does it happen? Without making demands, we see the dream. Why do we see the dream? Because in deep sleep, the consciousness wakes up spontaneously. And because it woke up, it manifests itself in certain visions. Just like that, this also, you're visiting this place. I'm not talking to you for my advantage, nor are you listening for your advantage. All this language is sprouting spontaneously in a dreamlike state. I always try to direct you towards the truth, but you come here with a bundle of conceptual sticks and stones, and instead of listening to what I say, you play with the sticks and stones on me. Right now, think of that last moment when the body will go. At that time, with what identity are you going to quit? This is a fraud. Everything is fraudulent, just like a dream world. What is the primary cause? What was the crime? The crime was that this consciousness started feeling conscious. The mischief started. Whether you like it or you don't like it, I am going to place before you the factual state of affairs. You know you are, but it is all imaginary. You think you are, but it is a fraud. Whatever the nature of the beingness and its behavior, it is not your behavior. When you abide in your true identity, you are out of this mischievous dream world. I have placed before you what you are. All of you have the fear that you are going to die, that this consciousness is going to depart. All the expressions are the expressions of the food essence body. Not you. Sweetness or pungency are the expressions of the food. You cannot conserve or preserve them. In the same way, this I amness is a quality or expression of the food essence body, and you cannot retain it forever. March 30th, 1981. I am amazed and astonished that you are sitting here. The talk is emanating from a state where there are no words. What identity do you think you have? How to establish oneself firmly in the awareness of I am? Does one think I am I am? Is it necessary to think that you are sitting here? You know that you are sitting here. However loudly and often I urge you not to think and act in terms of an entity identified with a body, you keep on doing so. Whatever name and form there is belongs to that material, and that material is not you. Do you analyze the problem and with a firm conviction decide that you are not the material? When the material disintegrates, what does the name refer to? Does it have any significance? One in ten million goes to the crux of the matter analyzes what is, comes to a conclusion, and gets liberated all by himself. The one who gets liberated is the consciousness. There is no entity. 
The ultimate understanding is that which enables the understanding to take place and itself becomes so subtle, so fine, that it disappears. And when this consciousness arises again, then the samadhi is broken and this I amness starts again. The words come from the consciousness, and the consciousness needs the strength of the body. The strength of the body is gradually weakening, and therefore the words do not come out as freely as I would like. Spending great energy, I repeat and repeat, but how many have understood? Basically, the thing is so simple that I get frustrated when you keep on coming here, listen to what I say, and show no indication that the words have reached home. What is the birth principle? You have understood or you have not understood. If you have understood, why do you keep on coming? If you have not understood, why do you keep coming? I just like being here with you. That is a different thing. But have you really imbibed what I want you to understand? We come here with so many concepts and what you are teaching is so astounding that it is like a shock treatment. So how do you expect us to ask questions? Let us absorb the shock for some time, then the questions will come. We are stunned into silence. Those who come here and listen to my talks and understand will become the gurus when they return to their own countries. It is easy to understand. Why don't you understand? At the present time in manifestation, what you are is the consciousness, and the consciousness cannot remain unless the food body is there. Therefore, consciousness depends on the food body, which is essentially of an ephemeral nature. And I cannot be that. It's as simple as that. Why don't you understand? It must happen that the consciousness is no longer conscious of itself. The sweetness is in the sugar. And I am the one who understands and tastes the sweetness. All these spiritual concepts have come in conventionally. The last step is knowingness, and its ultimate state is no knowingness. Transcending consciousness is when the consciousness knows and understands the consciousness. This morning, between deep sleep and awakening, there was this quiet, for a fraction of a moment, when there was a complete knowing, a stillness, just beingness. It is quite an elevated state, but don't get caught up only in that. Deep sleep is something like a block of ice. Nothing is there. Now it is again reshaping. The warmth is taking place. And with the warmth, you feel that you are. In the playing of the flute, the whole world is fascinated. The consciousness has kept you entranced in the play of the world. Inquire about that flute and who is playing it. Go to the source. When you are living this life, a number of questions arise and we have to be constantly aware of the consciousness. But the mind won't let us. The mind is an instrument for communication, for practical purposes. The mind cannot grasp the truth. The self witnesses the mind, but the mind cannot catch hold of the self. March 31st, 1981 when a clear understanding takes place of the nature and function of consciousness, that understanding no longer needs consciousness, because that understanding becomes the knower of consciousness. Is it possible to function as the total manifestation, not as an individual? What do you understand to be the total manifestation and individual? What is manifestation? I am the manifestation. I, the absolute unmanifested, and the same I manifested. Consciousness is the expression of the absolute. There are not two. If my life gives me great satisfaction and happiness, why should I bother about what or who I am? This consciousness will not rest until it gets the answer. This consciousness cannot bear its own existence, cannot bear its own consciousness. It wants to go back to its own place of rest. I am not inclined to discuss with words. You people come here with steadfastness. Diligently you come here and sit. If you have such a liking, you are welcome. My teaching is very simple. The experiencer and the experiences are all fancies. 
When you are a young person, you like all the activities of a young person very much. You get very involved in them. Once youth goes, you are disinterested in the activities of a young person. Similarly, as long as you are wearing this concept, I am, you will be involved with all the concepts. When this concept, I am, departs, there will be no memory left that I was and had those experiences. The very memory will be erased. Before you are completely liquidated, while there are some traces left of you, it would be better to quit this place. You may not come across these teachings in such great detail, and at this level. This lady has piled up a lot of knowledge. She possesses stacks of it. But in due course, she will not only forget whatever she has piled up, but she will forget herself that she was. April 4th, 1981 Is a self-realized person always in a state of bliss? One who has transcended the body idea does not need the ananda, bliss. When you didn't have the experience of the body, you were in that blissful state. That state which is prior to your birth cannot be described as deep sleep. It is beyond that. The experience of the yani is the same as your state prior to birth. It is a complete state. How can I be that? You are in that state all the time prior to having the body, but you are confused because of the body consciousness. The body is there. Don't ask questions, just listen. You need the company of the sages to understand what I am saying. This knowledge cannot be understood by the intellect. Is there Sat Chittananda in the eternal state? The food essence is Sattva and the quality of that consciousness, and inside that is the Sat Chittananda being consciousness bliss. The eternal state is prior to that. I have read in the books that the main reason to be born is your own desire to be born. How can it fit with the state before birth? Your birth is the result of the desire of your parents. How can I be released from the bondage? There is no bondage at all. Bondage is imaginary. If you are oriented towards the consciousness, all your questions will be dissolved by yourself. What is the obstacle to my realizing this? The only bondage is your constant memory that you are the body. Without understanding fully what Maharaj is, still people come here. Why is that? That is the union of knowledge and that principle which transcends knowledge. There is attraction between these two. That is why people from all over the world come here. I am intangible. You cannot add to me or take away from me. I am full, complete in all respects. Whatever you do to me, you will have to suffer yourself. If you are angry with me, you have to suffer. If you do anything to me, it will rebound upon you. If you spit at the sky, the spit will fall on you only. What is the material world created from? Out of the manifest consciousness, the material world is created, the eternal Parabrahman, the eternal Brahman, in which this play is always going on. In that play, you are the toll. No separate identity arises. In the body is the taste of I am. When the body is gone, the taste is gone. When you have some problem, you refer to a book. Why don't you investigate yourself, find out what you are? In this play of the five elements, whatever is seen or experienced is merely enjoyment. And for this enjoyment or entertainment, mind is very necessary. What are Brahma, Vishnu, and the other gods? They are merely appearances in consciousness. Each appearance has its own duration. That duration may be for millions of years, but they are all appearances and have an allotted span of existence. The knower of the knowledge is not affected in any way by the individual hopes, fears, etc. April 10, 1981 The unmanifest ever exists, but this manifest knowingness arises and departs. Presently I do not have any individuality. 
What is available is only the consciousness for the expression of which this material instrument is available. This consciousness is not a very desirable thing. It is an imperfect state. There is no reason or law of cause and effect for the functioning of this universal consciousness. Why something happens at a particular time cannot be explained in this dualistic state. We can only watch the functioning and cannot ask for any reason for any functioning which takes place. If we had the choice of taking on this body consciousness, who would be foolish enough to accept it? It is only because there has been no choice. Everything has been spontaneous. The suffering also has to be taken on because it is part of the total functioning. And there is no entity who can pick and choose. There is no individuality left. Nevertheless, so long as this body is part of the total functioning, whatever comes in the total functioning has to be suffered. There is any amount of suffering in the total functioning. This body is one of the millions of forms and the share of this body from the total suffering has to be experienced. I am trying to understand this. You are hanging on to an entity that is trying to understand. All of this is simply for the sake of communication. Who is an entity trying to understand what? You are carrying on a lot of activities because of certain concepts you entertain to satisfy the concepts that have arisen spontaneously in you. All this process of communication, expounding, etc. will go on so long as this conscious presence is available and all this merely to satisfy the concept I am. And you, the Absolute, are not the primary concept I am. I am telling you all this, and probably you like it, you enjoy it, but it is almost impossible for you to assimilate or perceive what I am saying. I am sure you have not understood exactly what I am saying. These are two great personalities, legal pundits. By coming here and listening to my talks, how can they put to use their legal knowledge? April 13, 1981 The disciple is devoted to the guru. Is this not duality? In the world, duality always exists. Manifestation can only take place in duality because of the identification with the body-mind. If the guru and the disciple are not identified with the body, where does the question of duality arise? The pupil and the guru are only knowledge, and there is no form or design to knowledge. We have accepted that we are not the body, that we were never born and cannot die. But it seems that something is missing. What is it? Give me a sample of the one who has heard and accepted. I assume that those who listen to me are knowledge. An animal exists only to appease the hunger. Is that all you are here for? There must be a change in you after listening to me all these days. One has to know that one is not the form, but the consciousness which gives sentience to the form. Has this change really occurred? The guru explains that the attachment to the guru is also a concept. How to get rid of it? The sadaka wants to pay his respects to the guru all the time. This is initial stage talk. Duality is there. The Sadaka considers Guru as something other than himself, so he wants to pay his respects. The Sadaka is also a Guru, a Yani. There is no difference. I am still doing this puja for my Guru. It has to be maintained for the guidance of others. Unless you have respect and love for a Guru, the process of your becoming concept-free will not be hastened. If you understand what I say, only then do you come here. If nobody comes, I will not be unhappy. Whatever must happen has already happened. April 15th, 1981 Would realization be possible by hearing the truth from the Guru, or is there any other way? No, only with the grace and guidance of the Guru. The Guru is the one who knows totally what is qualitative Brahman and non-qualitative, what is mundane matter and what is spiritual matter. You are holding on to all these things you have heard here as concepts. You don't try to be that. You like knowledge as a concept. 
Maharaj has said that the inner guru is more important than the outer guru. In the initial stages, you must have an external guru. That guru initiates you with the inner guru. What are the mantras for? A mantra is indicative of the aim or object in you. I am a physician, and I sometimes get attached to my patients and involved in their problems. Sometimes I can be detached and not feel involved, but my patients are like warriors with their problems and try to get me involved. Sometimes I feel like running away. This is the knowledge of your concepts. This is not your knowledge. To feel that you are involved in the world is a concept. To feel like running away is a concept. If a person is very sincere and wants self-realization more than anything else in the world, is it easier for him if he goes away by himself and thinks of nothing but that? Not at all. It is not that you are going to acquire something externally. The knowledge that you are is already there. Only understand that. This is all the play of concepts. Even to think that I am going to get the knowledge or I have got the knowledge is still a concept. Prior to getting the knowledge, whatever is, that is the truth. When someone asks Maharaj a very difficult question, where does the answer come from? Out of the question, the answer comes. With every question, the replies are attached. March 9th, 1981 If there is a painful illness, does the yani suffer it like anyone else? In the case of a yani, the mind and intellect do not function. They do not register what is being suffered. But the suffering is even more intense because in the case of an individual, it is the body which suffers. In the case of a yani, it is the consciousness that suffers. So anything that is experienced in consciousness becomes exaggerated many times more. But you need not bother with this stage because it is a rare case. In the case of a yani, the state is that of total disassociation from the body-mind. As an entity, a certain amount of disassociation with the body is a pleasing state, a state to which people look forward and accept. In the case of a yani, the disassociation is further and total, and therefore there is no question of any effect of such a state, pleasing or otherwise. The result is that there are no wants or desires. This is the way in which I experience. I don't know about others. Can Maharaj give me knowledge? Understand this. A yani cannot give knowledge to anyone. All he can do is point to that which is your true nature. Without such a condition offered here, I don't know why people are attracted to this place. There is nothing I can give anybody who comes here. The attraction to this place is spontaneous and not understandable intellectually. If what I have been saying is clearly understood by anyone, the effective result will be that even in the daily working of the individual's life, there will not be any specific intention. Things will continue in a sort of ball-bearing fashion, without any deliberate intention or deliberate action. In my own case, throughout the day the body carries out its normal functions. Things go on in a normal way and nothing is resisted. Throughout the whole day there is no interest in understanding what is happening. Up until eight o'clock the intellect does not function. Now I am aware of a little perception of my intellect. In the life of a yani, no yani will expose this secret. Not only will he have no desires or expectations, but neither will he have the attraction to be. The attraction of the consciousness to be is not there. To have any hopes, expectations, etc., one must have an image, an identity. May 10th, 1981 That which you like most, that itself, is I am, the conscious presence. But that is not going to last forever. When this flame is extinguished, what is the profit or loss to the flame? What does the flame represent? The knowledge, the consciousness, what is going to happen to that consciousness? Only in order to realize it, to understand it, do we have all this spirituality. When the flame is extinguished, it needs do nothing about itself. 
Similarly, understand when the body drops off and the consciousness is extinguished. You need do nothing. With this understanding, do what you like in the world. Presently, you are tied down to the bondage of the body and that is conceptual. The very thought of any advantage or disadvantage is dissolved when one realizes this knowledge. For the sake of that principle, you are involving yourself in many activities. When that very principle is dissolved into nothingness, what are you going to do? Don't try to pick and choose and say, this I must do and that I must not do. Don't impose such conditions on yourself. Any ant crawls on your body and stings you. By that bite or sting, you know that the ant is there. Just so, the feeling of this conscious presence, I am, is due to the material body. Having understood this, where is the person who should hold on to the worldly life or should give it up? The question does not arise. If you are fully charged with this knowledge in spite of the worldly difficulties, no difficulties will touch you. This cryptic, blunt talk will not be available elsewhere. At other places you will be given certain concepts arising out of consciousness, and out of those concepts more concepts are developed, and you are misled. Any type of concept in the realm of consciousness is unreal. Will the world listen to such talks? What are you? Are you that birth principle, that body, which is born of the secretion of the parents? The one who gets this knowledge is free from worldly or family problems. June 6th, 1981 The material of which the body is constituted is getting weary and weak, and along with it this knowledge is also getting weak. The sense of presence is still with me because that material of which the body is made still has a little strength. When that little strength goes away. Then the consciousness will also disappear. Then there will be no sense of presence. But I shall very much be without the sense of presence. Each of you is trying to protect yourself. What is it that you are trying to protect? However much you may protect, how long will it last? Go to the root. Find out what it is that you are trying to protect and preserve, and how long it will remain. The only spiritual way of understanding your true nature is to find out the source of this concept I am. Before the sense of presence arrived, I was in that state in which the concept of time was never there. So what is born? There is the concept of time. And that event which is birth, living, and death together constitute nothing but time, duration. Once you understand this, everything will be clear. Until you understand it, nothing will be clear. Is this not simple and easy? Words are simple, but apprehending what those words mean will be difficult. What is it in the absence of which you would not be able to understand even the words? Go to the root of that source. In apprehending what I have told you this morning, the intellect is totally impotent. There must be an intuitive apprehension of it. June 8th, 1981 People don't really understand what I say. They partially understand and form their own concepts. But the real self-knowledge is not there. Suppose there is a seed which is going to produce a great tree. If you cut that seed, you must be able to see the tree in the seed. The tree which I got is that seed which is called the seed of birth. When I broke it open, I got the self-knowledge. Other than self-knowledge, what other capital do I have? I have met so many so-called yanis, but the real one who has seen the tree and the seed, I have not seen so far. In the advanced stages, what happens to the intellect? To the disappearance of the intellect at old age, there is a witness. How can you describe that witness? Thoughts and emotions are always arising and distracting me. What shall I do? You are before any thought can arise. All thoughts, etc., which arise are merely movements in consciousness. Once consciousness arises, everything arises. The world and all the transactions in the world. 
merely witness them. It takes place, there is no individual to witness. Witnessing takes place of the total functioning of the universal consciousness. Because I totally negate the individual, this will appeal only to one in a million. There are so many people who are thoroughly dissatisfied, always searching for something and never satisfied. Why is that? You will never be satisfied until you find out that you are what you are seeking. If you want knowledge as an individual, you will not get it here. If you are satisfied with this knowledge, you may come and sit still. If you cannot accept this negating of yourself, you may leave. I will understand it will not affect me. That which has never happened at all, that is the child of a barren woman. What fear can you have for that? It is imagined unreal. Out of that hallucination, if somebody wants something, is it not seeking the real and the totally unreal? If it were real, then we could do something about it. Correct. You see something, that is true. But what you see is an illusion, like a dream. What we see in a dream seems real but we know that it is unreal. In spite of understanding all this, still it is difficult to give up this form identity of a male or a female. Without the form, the knowledge cannot be given. For the Absolute to manifest itself, the matter must be there. The Absolute unmanifested and the manifested are not two. It is merely the expression of it, like the shadow and the substance. This love of being is not of an individual being. It is the nature of the entire universal consciousness. June 11, 1981. Morning. It is only when the identity with the body mind has been firmly rejected and identity with the consciousness has been thoroughly established that what I say will have any meaning. What you are is the unlimited, which is not susceptible to the senses. By limiting yourself to the body, you have closed yourself to the unlimited potential, which you really are. In meditation, it is consciousness, which meditates on itself and remains within itself. If you accept what I have told you, then you do not take delivery of what is happening spontaneously in the world, and you are not concerned with either the cause or the effect. You then accept your true nature. Whatever actions take place through the body will take place independently of that which you really are. Bear in mind that when this life force, that which is the breath and consciousness, leaves the body, it will not seek permission from anything. It came spontaneously, and it will leave spontaneously. That is all that happens in that which is called death. There is no one who is born or who will die. As I understand it, the purpose of life is merely to understand that which has been manifested, and what is functioning is the universal consciousness. Other than understanding, there is nothing to be done. Is this correct? Correct. Everything is spontaneous, automatic, natural. It is only the concept of me and mine that is the bondage. When simple people like you are here, I am at peace, not disturbed. But when people come who consider themselves yanis who have the pride of knowledge and wish to show off their knowledge, then there is disturbance. This is a very high kind of knowledge at a very high level until it is absorbed. What should an ordinary man do? So long as there is receptivity a deep desire to understand it. There is nothing to be done. The knowledge itself will result in whatever is to result. It is not mental or intellectual caliber that is required, but an intuitive sense of discrimination. So now you are not the body. Having accepted it, can you continue to identify with the body? Do body and mind have an importance? Everything has an importance. Must we not take care of the body? One takes care of something with which one identifies. But you have nothing to do with body-mind anymore, so why are you concerned in taking care of them? When you are the space, you are no more the body. But whatever is contained in the space and the space, you are. You are now manifest whatever is known, the space, 
This space is known by Chirikash. When you are the Chirikash, you are subtler than the physical space. Expansiveness is more. Ayani transcends in various stages these subtleties, skies, spaces. In Chirikash, he is still confined, still conditioned by thinking, I am. Therefore, the next is Paramakash. Paramakash is the highest, in which there are other Akashas. 7. In Chittakash, this knowingness is I am. In Paramakash, there is no is or is not. It transcends everything. June 11th, 1981. Evening. What is love? Does it fulfill a need or pleasure? Yes, when you see something and you like it, this liking is love for that object. When anger and frustration arise, that too is part of love. It is quite good and very bad also. All the experiences of suffering are the result of love. Find out what is the requisite for all this play of love and hate. It is that love for beingness, existence, which gives rise to all pain and miseries. You have to face it because you love to be. Prior to any love, that love for being is there. It tastes both the qualities of love and misery, pleasure and pain. Take the case of this flame, of the cigarette lighter. It gives the light, the warmth, and it can also burn. Can I be away from it? What are you that wants to be away from it? If you are apart from me, I can keep you out of me. But whatever is, is not apart from me. What is the you that has sprouted, that has taken root? That alone is the cause of pleasure and pain. When you understand this, it is all over, finished. Then you do some clapping, shout, and scream out of exuberance. All the show is over. The knowledge I am giving is going to dispel all the so-called knowledge you have. A yani is subtle, like the space. What is the space like? You assume there is the sky. What is it like? This knowledge is subtler than the space. The father of the space is the knowledge I am. How do you know consciousness? The way you started knowing yourself exactly the same way. When you know that you are, it will be the same as acquiring yourself. Nevertheless, you were all along, were you not? What is the use of concluding logically? You must say right here and now, here he is. In actuality. Why does Maharaj take such an interest in me then? Who is taking an interest in whom? Who is having the doership of that? It is all happening spontaneously. June 13th, 1981. In common spiritual parlance, knowledge means repeating what you have heard, presentation of intelligence. They think it is spiritual. But no one tries to find out what he is, does not look at himself. When a boy and girl get married, they are intensely interested in each other. Similarly, when one gets married to spirituality, one is always occupied with thoughts or deliberations concerning spirituality. Are you the blood flowing inside? Are you the skin, the bones? You are not. When you investigate thus and come to understand that you are not the body, you will eliminate everything, whatever you are not. Finally, what will you be? Come to this point. You are so much addicted to the things which you learn by heart, the rituals, the bhajans, etc., that unless you recite them every day, you will not get any satisfaction of feeling happy. These ritualistic practices are given for the ignorant, to keep their body-mind busy. But having the body-mind is to know that you are and it has no name or form. There is no question of pleasure or pain, nor fear of death, for one who understands. If one identifies with the body, then one is caught up in the relations related to the body. My words are few and short, but they are very effective. There are many volumes written about spirituality which do not destroy your concepts, but add to them. All the volumes do not tell you what you are. What is meant by Chinma Yananda and Satchitananda? People sometimes dance when they sing bhajans. They lose themselves, so that state is called Chinma Yananda. 
To have that Chinma Yananda, the first touch of consciousness is necessary. Ananda means bliss, and this is a quality of mind, a higher realm of mind, but present in the consciousness. The prerequisite is the kiss of consciousness, which is necessary for that highest state of exaltation or exhilaration. That is Chinmayananda and Satchitananda. I have come to the firm conclusion that I am nothing. I have no design, no color, I have no image of myself. In the early morning when the waking state happens, that kiss of beingness appears, vibrant in the entire universe, and vibrating in myself. Also, I observe this same thing when I take rest in the afternoon. But if you want to judge me at a physical level, I am not able to lift this pot of water. That is how much strength is left in the body. But that touch of all the vibrant universe, that is the touch of my I amness. I am the knower of the Brahman. I am the Brahmanyani. Nevertheless, this touch of beingness is misery only. June 15th. 1981. Once the knowledge has dawned in you, you are a yani. You are no more a human person. You are the manifest Brahman, Chetana, the dynamic manifest Brahman. Earlier your thoughts used to be connected with the body and the relatives of the body. But having gotten disassociated from the body-mind and established in the state of dynamic consciousness, what could be the quality of your thoughts? Your thoughts will be more subtle if there are any thoughts. Nevertheless, this dynamic consciousness is the quality of the food body. So long as the body is, the consciousness is. Whatever you talk and receive in the morning, you will continue repeating until you fall into sleep. Nobody inquires at this level. All this functioning, how does it happen? What is the quality of this functioning and how does it occur? What are you? Inquire into it. Only a few people are capable of understanding this. That is why I send people away, because it is of no use just listening to words. But if that firm faith is there, what I say will dawn in them. The inadequacies of the intellect should be made up by this very strong faith. Beingness is there. The consciousness is there. And because it is there, the world is there. When the consciousness only prevails, when people talk, I don't understand. Only the conscious presence is felt and not the details of what is happening. Because of the conscious presence, you count me as present. If the consciousness is not there, you will say, I am not present. June 17, 1981 A questioner was quoting scriptures right and left. The moment the waking state starts, the worshipping of misery begins. When did you have the first birth? I don't know anything about it. Then how do you accept this about the ultimate? This is not your direct experience. It is borrowed knowledge from books. How can you accept what is not your direct experience? There was a robbery in Delhi. The police may arrest you here and accuse you of it. Have you ever been to Delhi? No. Then why did you accept this birth? What are the sastras or scriptures? It is merely the do's and don'ts on how we should behave in the world. Don't bring that here. Whether you accept this birth or not was the original question. Why bring in all this tall talk? Reading scriptures is all right for the ignorant. The next step is to give it up and try to understand what you are. Shake off all that you have read and try to understand now. You must apply your discrimination. It is of no use just blindly accepting what the scriptures have said. Accept them up to a certain stage. After that, you must be strong enough or mature enough to use your discrimination. People move about in search of knowledge, but they are caught up in the trap of words and in the fine concepts developed by so-called sages. A certain sage will ask you to behave in one way and you go to another sage and he will have you behave in another way. Thus, you are caught up in the concepts of others. There is the story of Rishi in the scriptures who drank the waters of the seven oceans in one handful. Are you going to believe this? Employ your discrimination. 
you speak of acerana, the code of behavior. Cerana means the one who has to behave. Cerana means only I love state, I am state, the state of consciousness, the feeling of being without words. From that condition, the movement in consciousness begins. Loki and a Loki. Loki we normally take as worldly. Loki means various personalities. Whatever is prescribed by the personality is Loki, or whatever is followed by the people. A Loki is transcending the worldly. A Loki, is it not known to you? These devotees love me, but they don't understand me in the Loki sphere. Spiritual talk is Loki talk, common talk, trying to give an image to others. Here, there is no image or design. Now, how can you become one with that? You have to have an image or design. Whatever knowledge we talk about has to be communicated by words. But that is not the ultimate. You want to possess knowledge, to collect knowledge. Such knowledge is plentiful and available in the world, but a rare person will understand that such knowledge is a bundle of ignorance. You will make a study of those concepts which erupt from you. Those concepts which you do not like will not occur to you. If you are interested in spiritual living, your thoughts and concepts will relate to that. I have said what I have to say. There is no question of saying any more. Because you have come here, I treat you with courtesy. But I am fully convinced that you and I have no design. I am afraid that what I say will not reach your real core. Therefore you do bhajans. As a matter of fact, you should not visit me at all. Biswa was on the bed of arrows in his last days. I am also on a bed of arrows of suffering. June 26th, 1981 For those who are sitting here, the benefit you get will not be different from the benefit you get sitting under the shade of several thickly-leaved trees. Sitting under the trees, there is a certain amount of peace and the feelings of well-being. Stay in peace. My teachings are emanating out of this consciousness. It is like a big shady tree for relaxation. You come here and sit and feel the relaxation, but you are not able to say what it is like. In that state you are not able to explain by words. You are in a relaxed state, but the deeper meaning is reveling in the self, abiding and subsiding in the self. That is why you feel relaxed and happy. Whatever sentences you hear in this state will not be forgotten. Swarta. Swa means self. And arta meaning. Swarta has great meaning. Swarta means selfishness. And swa means the meaning of the self. Words have meaning in the practical world which will make you selfish. But the words which emanate here will give you the meaning of your own self. A mother and grandson came and garlanded Maharaj and distributed prasad to everyone present. The deep state of simple, innocent people comes to fruition in this fashion. She prayed that her son would pass the examination. Her own faith worked. If you enjoy this relaxed state here, and if you become one with this state, you will also transcend this state. You will even transcend into the state prior to the birth of gods. With this understanding, do what you like. Carry out your worldly activities. When you understand the meaning of swa, the self, there will be no room for selfishness. Understand this thoroughly. Abide in it, then in due course you will realize it. When the time is ripe, only then will it happen. What is your worth? You are the consciousness through which the world is expressed. Abide in that worthiness. Don't step down into the mind and the body. Again, you must have the firm conviction that you are unaffected by birth and death. You are like space. Not only like space, you are prior to space. That ultimate you can never be lost. Whatever you have lost, you have lost. Only the words. I have told you enough, and whatever you have heard, retain it. Deliberate over it. Ponder over it. And be one with that. July 1st, 1981
Deep sleep is no knowing. The absolute is beyond knowingness and no knowingness. I do not understand. To start with, a child is born. The infant does not know itself. The reactions of hunger, thirst, etc. take place. These are physical things when life is there. But inside that state, knowingness has not developed or matured fully. After one or two years, it comes to know itself, the mother, etc. When the child knows itself, its knowingness has started. Prior to that, it is ignorance. Although it is no knowingness, it is ignorance. Then the knowledge I am is attained. It does not know who it is, but it knows it is something. Later on, the child starts collecting concepts and ideas which other people feed it and develops certain concepts or images about itself and others. The mind has developed. Then comes deep sleep and the waking state, the daily cycle. In the waking state, in whatever state of mind you are, you know the world, together with your concepts, and then you fall into sleep. Now, technically, you can call that deep sleep no knowingness. But this is not that no knowingness beyond which the absolute lies. Let us proceed again from the child. Ignorance, knowingness, accumulation of concepts, meeting the guru. The guru tells you, get rid of all concepts. Just be yourself. So when you are, only you are. This is the first step, to abide in the consciousness that you are. Without words, that is knowledge. When the child started knowing itself, there was also knowledge. But that is a general knowledge and is common to all. This becomes spiritual now. The seeker, having understood what the guru said, gets rid of the concepts. And now, as the first step, the seeker dwells in the state I am, just being. First of all, there is the knowingness, I am, without words. With that knowingness, the world is. Now when the seeker goes into meditation, that knowingness goes into no knowingness. This is the highest in the hierarchy when the body aspect is there because this knowing and no knowing are aspects of the body. And body means consciousness. And in the realm of consciousness, knowingness and no knowingness exist. The absolute transcends knowingness and no knowingness. So no knowingness is the highest in the hierarchy of spirituality. And the destination is transcendence of knowingness and no knowingness. I thought no knowingness means the absolute. Knowingness and no knowingness are the expressions of the bodily consciousness. When this food instrument body, together with the consciousness, is totally transcended, that is the absolute. The light is there, the darkness is there. But what is the background? The space. The space is there which is neither the light nor the dark, but the space is. You have to transcend light and darkness to abide in space. Similarly, one has to transcend the knowingness and no knowingness, the aspects of bodily consciousness. If you have reached that state, you are watching consciousness and no consciousness. That is called natural samadhi or sahaja samadhi. Naturally, you are in that state, but this psychosomatic instrument of body and consciousness is always available. The moment somebody comes, the instrument is being operated. Otherwise, you revert to the absolute. It is something like this. In a big hall, there is a door. And in the door is a people. That people is the consciousness. But you are at the back. Suppose that those spaceships are going up from the earth. When you are in space, you feel that you have escaped the earth. But it is not so. You are still under the influence of the earthly atmosphere. You must go further into the space where there is no atmosphere. But where is the thought of your going there? It is not like that. You are truly the absolute. And these are all the coverings you have gotten. You know you are, but you forget that you are, and that forgetfulness is no knowingness, which is the highest state. You can never describe it by words. That state is never captured by words. 
Understanding is necessary, and you should not get confused. Suppose you live in a state of knowingness. You should not think that you are a yani already simply because your knowingness receives many powers in that state. You might think you are a yani, but it is not so. It is simply the first step. There are a lot of allurements at that stage. When you are only being without words, you are powerful. Give up the powers. Don't possess them.